I picked up this Bridgeport vice sometime last year. It's in kind of rough shape. It's besides being dirty, there's some bozo marks on the jaws and the vice base. I figured I would at least go ahead and clean it up, try to get it looking presentable and give it a decent uh, paint job. I want to get the swivel off of it. These little bent washers I'm taking off, I'm sure were shot made, but they probably did a pretty decent job of keeping the swarf out from inside that channel. These square headed bolts just slide out the back. The feed screw is essentially held on with this collar that is pinned to the screw itself with a roll pin. The movable jaw is essentially clamped to the base with a piece of steel on each side. I'll call them gibs. I'm not sure what the right term is for them. If you know, drop a comment. But in order to get to those screws, you have to get these access holes uh, right underneath them. So you move the jaw back and forth until you can see the screws and then you can uh, remove them or put them back in, whatever the case may be. Hmm. As you can see, some of these are incredibly hard to get out. Um, a couple of them uh, I couldn't get out without some help. <clears throat> After not getting anywhere with the T-handled Allen key, I switched to my uh, 3 8 drill driver. When that didn't work, I switched to the half-inch impact. If you watched any of the videos on my lathe teardown, you know that heat is no stranger to me i i will use it when i need to um, after using some heat i grabbed some screw extractors um, and found one that seemed to fit in the head of the allen key This one proved to be exceptionally stubborn. Um, tried quite a bit of heat and the screw extractor, and that didn't work. I couldn't get enough of a bite. So um, I grabbed a, a drill bit to go ahead and make that um, socket a little bit deeper, uh, and then used a larger screw extractor to work on it some more. Thank <laughs> you. 
With those two gibs removed, I used my pry bar to loosen uh, the movable jaw because it was still a bit stiff on there and it eventually popped off. And I'll unthread the feed screw and then make sure it gets a good cleaning. The soft jaws for the movable jaw are held on with some socket head cap screws um, that are drilled all the way through the movable jaw itself and are tapped into the soft jaws. And then there are two socket head cap screws that hold the fixed jaw in place. All of these parts and pieces will go into a degreaser bath and then probably some evapo rust too. Now that uh, these parts are clean, I want to address something I noticed when disassembling the feed screw. There is a lot of play in this nut, and if you look down inside there, the threads are fairly worn. I couldn't find an exact replacement, but I found something that might work. The first thing I need to do is remove this roll pin that captures the feed nut in place. And then I will use a punch um, to drive the feed nut out from the back. Here you can see the two feed nuts and the new one is about 30% shorter. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, I will need to machine the outer diameter though. In order to machine the OD of the new feed nut, I'm going to use my 13 inch south bend lathe. Uh, first I need to make an arbor. Uh, the arbor will hold the feed nut in place so I can machine it all in one setup and I won't have to flip it around and try to re-indicate. The first thing I'm doing here is I'm making a spacer that will go on the end of the arbor um, and I can tighten a nut down against it that will then capture the new feed nut on the arbor. Cutting it off, I'm getting a lot of chatter here. My cutoff skills need a lot of work. I've swapped that piece of steel around in the chuck and I'm measuring the original feed nut. I want to machine down the OD of this whole piece so it's slightly less than the OD of the feed nut. That way when I'm machining the new one, I'm not machining steel as well. I'm drilling a centering hole here so I can pull in the tailstock to add some rigidity to this setup. This is right where I want it to be. So now I just need to machine down a little bit more to where the feed nut will slide on. 
50 thousandths depth of cut. It's 100 thousandths off the diameter. Might be a bit much. With that a nice fit for the feed nut, I'm going to machine the end of this now down to 9 16 so I can thread it for a nut. Sixty two and a half on the button. I wanted to get that machine down to precisely nine sixteenths, mostly because this is my first time cutting threads, which is why everything is seemingly in slow motion to those of you who have done this before. Uh, I've got the cross slide set to zero, my compound set to zero and at 29 and a half degrees. And I have a dial indicator on my tool post. First pass is just a scratch pass, uh, only moved in about two thousandths of an inch. Before going any deeper, using a thread pitch gauge to make sure that I have the machine set up and it's cutting what it's supposed to. The other reason why I'm going so slow is I am threading toward a shoulder and I don't want to crash this machine. My chuck is threaded on and if I were to run the lathe backwards there's a potential although extremely small that i could unthread the chuck and that would be worse i put the dial on the tool post because i was trying to determine how deep i should cut these threads based on the data in the machinery's handbook and I must have read that wrong because I went a lot further <laughs> than what was listed in that book so at this point I decided to just um, keep cutting until I got a good fit with the nut.
almost there. I think I probably need to cut another three to six thousandths off of this and I should be all set. You know, they, they say a blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and again. Without removing the arbor from the lathe in order to preserve some concentricity, I put the feed nut on and then the spacer and then a nut on the end of the arbor and tightened it down to be sure that that brass didn't go anywhere while I was turning it. I need to measure the OD of the original to make sure that I get a good fit. One technique I've seen others use is they measure the original and then zero a digital caliper. And then when I take measurements of the replacement, it'll give me a rough idea of how much I have to remove so I don't have to be doing the math constantly. I didn't record most of the roughing here. Now I'm using a micrometer to see how much more needs to come off of the OD of the nut. Admittedly, I'm very new to this hobby of machining, so I am taking my time here to make sure that I don't take off too much. Uh, so I, I am stopping, taking off another couple of thousands, and then measuring again and again just to make sure that I don't take off too much. All right, the OD is good. It bang nuts on matches the original. So now I want to machine this little groove. It's for oil. There's an oiler on the side of the movable jaw. There's a hole in the feed nut. And when you oil the side of it, it works its way down into the groove and then eventually into that hole to lubricate um, the feed nut. Of course, I doubt this vise has been lubricated in the past 30 years so the width and the depth of this is not critical so I'm just doing it by eye. I don't know if the Loctite is necessary and I don't have any green Loctite so I'm just using what I normally would use on a press fit seal uh, which is red. And then use the old feed nut to drive the new one in so it's flush with the front of the movable jaw. And lastly, there's a roll pin that goes through the movable jaw through a groove in the side of the feed nut that captures it in place keeps it from turning and keeps it from moving forward and back um, 
So I'm using my dad's very ancient Taiwanese import drill press to do this. One of these days I need to get a proper drill press. This, this isn't it. With a new groove drilled in through the new feed nut, I am driving back in the original roll pin. I don't have a roll pin this long, otherwise I would go ahead and replace it. With that done, it's time for some reassembly. Uh, off camera, I had driven out this center pin on the swivel, so I'm just using uh, a brass hammer to drive it back in. I wanted to make sure that everything inside of there was clean. And now I have these square headed bolts that slide in through the back and go into that swivel channel. I'm going to set the swivel base aside while I reassemble the vise itself. The feed screw threads into that nut perfectly. Uh, zero to no play. Um, now I can set it on uh, the vice body and get ready to put all the other pieces back together. There are two spacers or thrust washers probably that go on either side of this casting. They're held in place from spinning with a dowel pin. That dowel pin was missing when I took this apart. And then this collar, which captures everything in place, can go on next. Putting the soft jaws now on the fixed side of the vise. Uh, I had already put the soft jaws on the movable piece before installing it on the vise. You can't get the screws into the movable jaw with the jaw in place. So you have to do it before. And just like in the disassembly, you access the screws that hold the gibs onto the movable jaw through these access holes. So I'm just moving the jaw back and forth until I get all six of them reinstalled. And lastly, I'll put the main vice body back on the swivel. Um, I'm reusing the same hardware that came off of it. Interestingly enough, one of the nuts on one side is taller than the nut on the other side. Um, I don't know if I will keep this swivel on here if I use this vice. Um, I just think it takes up some unnecessary vertical space. And there it is all reassembled. It moves very smoothly. I'm really happy with it. Um, I did put some material in it and test it as best I could. I didn't put it on the, I didn't bolt it down. So kind of hard to get a good uh, torque on the handle, but I will certainly do that when uh, I put it on the mill table. Well, I had a good time refurbishing this vise. I will make a new set of jaws once I get the mill up and running. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Please uh, give it a thumbs up if you did like it. And if you're not a subscriber already, I would really appreciate if you would uh, smash that subscribe button and don't forget the bell icon. Thanks for watching.